All right, so uh, since we're experiencing technical difficulties, I'm just going to kind of start talking at you guys about what we're talking about. Could you open up my slides? Uh, and yeah, and you guys are just going to have to imagine. deal with that. Yeah, imagine I will be very descriptive, but the first part of this is of this is intro and it's just talking, so let's start with that. So uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to Bypass 102. In this talk, we're going to be covering basic bypass remediation. So a general prerequisite for this talk is I'm hoping that you've seen Bypass 101. If you haven't, I recommend you watch that later when um, it is uploaded. We were on the creator stage earlier for that talk. Uh, yeah, and then please keep all questions till the end if we have time for questions. So for those that aren't aware, what Bypass is, is basically ignoring the lock and trying to fi figure out a way to exploit the door hardware or the surrounding area in order to gain access into a locked out space. Uh, here, just let me do it, please. So again, this covers basic remediation and retrofits that'll help you secure your facility from these basic bypass methods. So similar to cybersecurity, physical security vulnerabilities and remediation is basically an ongoing forever game of cat and mouse. Every time somebody finds a vulnerability, someone else comes up with a patch. And then for that patch, someone finds a new vulnerability. And it repeats over and over again. And you know that's the cycle of security. Same thing applies for uh, cyber. So like I mentioned earlier, lock bypass involves ignoring that lock completely and finding an alternative way to get that door open or avoid using the door altogether. These methods, these bypass methods are very often used in physical security and physical hacking, and they are generally simple enough to use by anyone uh, with a little bit of know-how. Uh, in case you guys don't have that know-how, you can come over to our village and check us out, and we will teach you that know-how, and you'll see how easy it is. Now I'm gonna talk a, a little bit about latch targeted bypasses. <coughs> so this will, um, this applies to uh, all the, oh, looks like we have the presentation coming up. Uh, but you'll see in the slide um, what you mean. What uh, I mean. So essentially, uh, this is ways to uh, remediate uh, the um, bypass, which uh, is uh, called target uh, carding. So carding tar uh, targets a latch that holds the door closed, and essentially by carding it, um, you're essentially um, uh, bypassing the, this dead latch, which prevents the plunger from moving. Uh, so the best way of uh, bypassing this is to install, of uh, remediating this, is to install the doors properly. Oh. Um, so installing these uh, dead latches, and especially doors properly, is, is extremely um, difficult, especially um, if your door is, for example, um, wooden, or um, just because um, they're, uh, in order for, uh, if you guys have watched the um, Bypass 101 talk, you guys know that in order for the dead latch to um, work, it has to be actuated when the door is closed. Now the issue is, is that um, there are tolerances, right? So for example, it needs to be um, uh, installed exactly the correct way so that, um, so that, uh, give me one second, so that uh, when the door is closed that uh, the dead latch is actuated. What that means is that also, if you push the door, for example, um, it will still be actuated. The door cannot warp, um, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a couple of different ways. Uh, give me a second. Does all that work? There it is. Ah, there you go. Woo! Woo! Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we're trying our best to get the uh, AV working, but uh, again, the DEF CON Wi-Fi is our best friend in the whole wide world. Uh, so uh, Terry was about to talk about dead latches, so I'll talk about that until we can figure out how to get this load. Can you connect to your hotspot? Um, yeah, so basically, go back. Please go back. Can you just disconnect until... No, no, connect to his hotspot. Thanks guys for being patient. So uh, a dead latch is essentially a security mechanism that is built into that uh, door 
closing hardware that allows you to stop people from using this exploit. So for those familiar with Bypass 101, what we call latch slipping or latch shoving, it seems a little bit too easy and it's because it is. It has this security mechanism that prevents you from able, being able to do this, but a lot of the installers of doors and other things in a facility doesn't really think about that. They don't care about the security, they don't know what these features do. All in all, you know, it means that people aren't keeping that security mindset in place while they're doing their installations and that leads to a lot of vulnerabilities. So I'm sure you guys have seen the retrofits for this before. If you've ever walked along a long hallway and you've seen doors with like a big metal plate over that latch, usually what this is is a retrofit. So they found that that dead latch isn't working properly and so instead of fixing the door, instead of installing it properly, they're just putting this panel over it and going, okay, that's good enough, now they can't latch slip the door. However, these can still be bypassed. Uh, for example, with this um, little latch cover, what people can do is take a little bit of piano wire, stick it behind the latch, and open it pretty much the exact same way without much more trouble. Do we have it? Yay! Woo! So if you could full screen that. It's not on screen. Uh, how many hackers does it take to play a PowerPoint presentation? <laughs> uh, oh, okay, there we go. Uh, do we have the... Just, just a slideshow, you're fine. Do, 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 do. Yay! Okay, so uh, we're gonna give this a second to load and hopefully this video loads, that'll give us a little demo of how the dead latch works. There it is. There you go. Okay, so like I was mentioning, so there's the latch, and that little half moon shape there is what's called the dead latch. And when it's pushed into the door, it actually prevents the latch from being able to be pushed in, thus stopping that exploit. So obviously the easiest way to prevent people from using this exploit is just to install your door properly and make sure that the dead latch is actually being pushed in when that door is closed. Uh, I already talked about this retrofit, so we're just gonna skip over that and again it can be bypassed in fact usually on red team engagements i'm looking out for these kinds of covers because it means that that latch is vulnerable to an attack uh, oh cool uh, next i'm going to be talking about handle targeted bypass so this usually mimics a person on the other side of the door exiting from the other side and can be used on lever handles and doorknobs and crash bars the easiest way to prevent this, I'm gonna have to go fast, I'm running out of time. So the easiest way to prevent this is to have a properly sized door that fits into the door frame and doesn't leave gap enough for tools to fit in, around, or under. Uh, in addition to that, certain types of lever handles will make it more difficult to use the under the door tool. A retrofit like this can help reduce the amount of gap underneath your door and make sure people can't fit tools underneath. Uh, you've probably seen things like this which isn't intended to better secure your facility but for weatherproofing but it can make using those kinds of tools more difficult. In addition to that, windows next to your door or alongside your door can make it easier to use these tools so cover them up or don't have them at all if not necessary. Uh, mag logs can also provide additional security but again these can also be bypassed. So you have deadbolts, this is a deadbolt, uh, they're different from uh, dead latches and uh, have a thumb, uh, thumb turn on the other side. Uh, the best way of uh, remedi remediating the this is to have a double sided deadbolt. Basically uh, you don't have that thumb, thumb turn on the other side, this prevents you from using G J tools um, to bypass it. Uh, if you don't know what J tool is, you can look in our village. Yeah, and basically the thing is, in exchange for security you are losing a bit of convenience but sometimes in certain facilities it is worth that exchange. For push bars, uh, the main thing is don't have holes or gaps in your door. If possible, uh, use a push bar uh, with dead latches to prevent um, uh, latch uh, targeted attacks. There are also retrofits, which you'll see in a bit. Uh, we also have a video. Uh, uh, we had a video, it's no longer there. Uh, we were on a red team engagement. Basically, uh, 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 someone was able to reach their hand around and push on the push bar from the other side. If you want to see it, um, you can come by after. I'll show you the video on my phone. Uh, oh yeah, you can see the retrofit here. Uh, they can be bypassed, but it makes it a lot harder. Uh, uh, we can also use bar, uh, bar guards, again, uh, to further prevent uh, bypasses. Again, it is possible, but yeah. 
Okay, cool, next is removing hinges. So usually you can take out those little hinge pins and pull the door off of the frame. There are special security hinges such as these ones called set screw hinges and stud pit hinges that allow you to lock that door and even if the hinge pin is taken out, you can't actually remove the door from the frame. Uh, button push combination locks. So these are simplex locks. They use the default combination from the factory two and four at the same time. And then the number three, change your default combinations. Uh, other combination locks as well. You can easily find these defaults online. Change your combination. Uh, um, enter phones. OK, so I'm sure you've seen these before. These are enter phones. They're used to let people into apartments and high rises. You can call up using that enter phone, and the resident can push a button on their phone and allow you access. Uh, there's a master code that comes from the factory that allows the owner of the building and the owner of the enter phone to add entry codes and add residents. Uh, you can find these online from manufacturers. So change your combination! Uh, further to that, these enter phones are key to like, and with these keys, you're actually able to open all enter phones by that same brand and get at the electronics. Uh, guess how you can fix this? You can change your lock. Wow, they don't have to be the default. Uh, there's also these. These are security bars and enter phone covers, and they can be used to prevent people from being able to force it open, or even if they have a key for the enter phone, from opening it and getting at those circuitries inside. You have request to exit uh, sensors. Uh, they're set up so that uh, you can unlock when you're coming in from uh, the inside of the building. Uh, so most of them uh, rely on passive infrared. Uh, if someone can trick you into uh, the sensor into thinking there's someone inside and exit the building, then it'll allow them access. What you, can, what you have is you have um, uh, uh, sensors that use both uh, PR and radar to detect if someone is coming in. There used to be a, a company called Interlogix, which made an, uh, a rec sensor. They no longer exist. There are other um, companies in the market, but they're um, many thousands of dollars, but they do exist. Uh, for remediation, they are, uh, rec sensors are generally uh, more convenient. They are less secure. For more secure areas, uh, there are these rec buttons uh, that you can use. Um, make sure to put them away from the door so people can't um, use any sort of wire to push it from out the outside. As well as that, uh, tap in, tap out, of course, is the most secure way to let people in and out of spaces. But again, you're trading that convenience in for that security. Uh, elevators. So you see elevators. Two minutes. Okay. We have elevators everywhere in modern buildings. There's a lot of bypasses that you can get around them. Uh, a lot of elevator locks can be changed out and don't have to be the default. Uh, this is not true for fire recall switches. Do not touch your fire recall key switches. Um, but generally, the best way to prevent people from hacking your elevators to get into a space is don't rely on elevator floor lockouts for security. It's way better to have a little hallway and then have additional locked doors past that elevator in order to prevent people from gaining access when they're not supposed to. Other remediation. So it's really important to foster a proper security culture within your company. Things like tailgating and other methods of social engineering are often the easiest way to get into a secure space. Employees that disallow tailgating or see people that they don't recognize and say, hey, who are you? Do you work here? Can you prove it? Can help stop bad actors. In addition to that, alarms and sensors are very important. They can be used in combination with retrofits to prevent bypasses and catch people that are in the middle of using bypasses. These are imperfect and can be bypassed, but the main thing is without sensors, without cameras, without detection, anyone can get in with sufficient force and time. Uh, like I mentioned, cameras, they are part of a complete security plan. They can deter, enable response, and minimize risk of insurance claims refusal. Uh, last of all, timing analysis. So this is a service that I do work in, and in combination with your alarm sensors, cameras, everything, and your response time has to all be taken into consideration in order to get to the bad get to the bad actor before they're able to do any harm to your company. Okay, we've reached the end for the questions. I'm so sorry, guys. You're going to have to play this video at like 0.5 speed. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, you can come by the village and come talk to me and Terry. I'm very sorry for the technical difficulties, but I hope you guys enjoyed it regardless. Thank you!